This is me, and this is my new Hardcore Minecraft world. In this video, I will attempt to survive 100 days in Hardcore Minecraft. 100 Minecraft days is about 33 hours of gameplay, and if I die one time, my world is lost forever. I'm not sure how hard or easy this challenge will be, however, I do have three goals that I want to complete before the 100 days is up. My first goal is to kill the bosses, and by the bosses, I mean the Ender Dragon and the Wither. I'm grouping these together because they are both a challenge, and they are my top priority. The second thing I want to accomplish is getting full enchanted netherite armor and tools before day 50. To make this happen, I'm going to have to be playing a little bit more risky in the first 20 days. And my final goal is to build a massive house. I want it to be the biggest thing I've ever built. And one last thing before we start the video, there is a 0% chance that you are subscribed because this is my first upload. So if you don't mind, please hit the subscribe button. It'll mean a lot to me. And this whole series was streamed live on Twitch. So if you enjoy it and you want to see me play live, make sure you head over there and give me a follow. All right, day one. First things first, when I spawn in, is I go get some wood, obviously. I am looking for a village because my goal is to get full diamond armor by day 5. But before any of that happens, I need to get wood and some basic tools. So I go and chop down the closest tree I can find. I immediately craft a wooden pickaxe for the sole purpose of mining 3 cobblestone. After getting basic tools, I went off looking for a village. Luckily, there was one right next to spawn. I quickly ran through the village and looted all their chests. The plan was to make emeralds by trading sticks, so I needed flint for a fletching table. While I was trying to get flint, I noticed some exposed iron, so I went down and got it. But was this iron worth dying for? Chick-fil-A oh. No! Ow. Uh, get me out of here! Oh my god! Ah! <laughs> I like this seed, man. I'm not trying to die right now. After that close encounter, I finished mining the gravel to get some flint for the fletching table. I also made a shield. Look at these villagers, man. What are they doing? With the fletching table, I was able to start trading sticks for emeralds. After doing some chopping and trading, I went out looking for some iron to upgrade my armor, and I ended up finding quite a bit. The next step I needed to complete was getting sugarcane and leather so I could make books for a lectern so I could trade for a fortune book. However, before I could start cycling for a fortune book, I needed more emeralds, so it was back to chopping. That night, I grinded for the fortune book, and after about 5 minutes, I finally got it. Unfortunately, it was only fortune 2, but that's not that big of a deal. By combining both books, I was able to make a fortune 3 book, which I then put on an iron pick. This pickaxe would be temporary until I found diamonds. We for show got some diamonds here though. Oh, look at that, let's go. After finding those diamonds, I wanted to test my luck, so I hit the strip mines. I also told myself I would not go back up to the surface without full diamond armor and tools. Let's go! With these additional diamonds, I was able to make a chest plate, which is really good for boosting my armor protection. I then stumbled into the best cave ever. Let's- Whoa, okay! Oh, he told me to go up to- Oh, and- and more. I ended up finding a total of 42 diamonds in this cave. That's enough for full diamond armor and tools. This diamond armor made me feel a lot safer than when I had just iron armor. Back on the surface, I started planting these big trees so I'd be able to get wood a lot faster. I also went looking for some more flint so I'd be able to get more fletchers to increase my profits. However, that night, I encountered something super rare and dangerous. I was just minding my own business, chopping down some wood for some more sticks when I suddenly saw it. Oh my god, it's a zombie raid. A zombie raid. I'd never seen one of these before, so it caught me by surprise, but I handled it with ease. After slaughtering every last zombie, I tried a villager inside its house and cycled it so I could get mending. Having a mending villager would be a game changer. I would no longer have to worry about my tools durability or my armor breaking while I was in battle. After about 5 minutes of cycling, I finally got it. I also cycled a different villager for a protection book so I could upgrade my armor. Unfortunately, I had to settle for protection too, but it was fine. It was just going to cost me a little bit more emeralds in time. After combining 4 books together, I finally put protection 4 on my leggings. After a little bit more trading, I was able to put protection 4 on all my armor except my helmet. I was feeling very confident, so I went on a killing spree. I was even able to pick up a disc. Shoot the creeper. Yes! Oh, and that's a good one. On the morning of day 11, I just looked at myself and admired how much I've accomplished in such a short amount of time. But I didn't slow down. I wanted to beat the Ender Dragon by day 20, so I got to work. One of the things I needed to feel safe fighting the Ender Dragon was Feather Falling. I'm pretty good with the MLG water, but just in case I miss it, I don't want to lose all the progress I've made. That being said, I got to work cycling a villager so I could get the trade. I ended up getting it pretty quickly, but I needed more levels before I could put it on my boots. I did, however, put protection on my helmet, so all my armor had prot 4. For some reason on this world, I wanted to get all the discs, so so that night I went out and made skeletons kill creepers. One more shot, come on. Yes. Oh, another one. Oh, another one. Oh, yes, Strad. Let's go. 
Nice. Oh, and that one's a good one too. Dude, we're getting so good with these discs. Man, look at my disc collection. It's so good. If I wanted to achieve my goal of beating the Ender Dragon before day 20, I would need to go to the Nether. So before I head out, I put mending on my helmet so all my armor had prod for and mending. Then it was off to find a lava pool. It didn't take me too long to find one. And once I was there, I quickly made the portal and hopped in. From the looks of it, I thought I got a really crappy spawn per usual. But after I explored the area around the portal a little bit, I realized I had hit the jackpot. Is that a fortress? And that's a fortress right there. Oh my god, that's great. That's actually great. Oh, and a bastion? Oh my god, holy sh**. Okay, so we got two bastions. As you can tell, I usually get pretty bad nether spawns. But I was able to see one fortress and two bastions all nearby. I'll quickly head over to the fortress and kill all the blaze I can. I'm gonna need the blaze rods for eyes of ender so I can go to the end. I also ran into some widow skeletons, but luckily I have prop four and I literally take no damage. When I was done with the fortress, I head over to the nearby bastion, took their gold so I could trade with piglins. Yes, I'm stealing their gold, but I give it back in exchange for some crappy trades, of course. Thankfully, the piglins didn't really waste my time and I didn't have to wait too long for ender pearls. Don't mind me, I'm just admiring the sky on my way back home. And the last thing on my to-do list before I fought the dragon was putting feather falling on my boots. At this point, I was all ready to go. I just had to land this MLG. I threw the first eye and followed it. it. Took a little while for me to find the stronghold, but once I did, we entered. This stronghold was very confusing to navigate. It took me a pretty long time for me to find the end portal, but once I did, I set up another portal there because I actually needed more pearls. I had saved the coordinates from the other portal, so I used those to help me get back to the main area. And thankfully, the piglins gave me pearls pretty quickly and I didn't have to wait. Because if I did, I wouldn't have been able to do this in under 20 days. I did one last check to make sure I had everything I needed, thought about all the things we had accomplished, and hopped in. So far so good, the ender dragon wasn't putting up that much of a fight. I only had a few more end crystals to take out before I could start attacking the dragon. I was really nervous so you can see how much I was shaking. The ender dragon tried knocking me off but I'm just too good with the water bucket. Woo! And there it was, the last end crystal destroyed. I accidentally aggro two endermen but I got boat strapped. Get in the boat. <laughs> you get in the boat too. Get in the boat. <laughs> yeah. Oh and pearls too. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Ender Dragon didn't like me beating up on the Enderman. The dragon perched, so I was able to start whacking it with my axe. It didn't like that very much, and it threw me in the air. For some reason, I hit the wrong hockey and couldn't get to my water bucket, and that's exactly why I got feather falling. Someone's gotta send me to the Archery Olympics, because I'm just too good with this bow. The dragon didn't stand a chance! Before I finished off the dragon, I made sure to grab some of its breath. And let me tell you, it smells. And here we are, the final part of the battle. The dragon has about three hits left before it's dead. Oh my god! I was literally gonna- I was gonna crit you to- Mother f- Huh! Alright. Where? Where'd he go? I'm so good at this game. And just like that, the battle was over. I had won. I made sure to grab all the experience and the dragon egg. That's how you get it. Back in the overworld, I wasted no time making preparations to go look for an end city. I made fireworks so I'd be able to fly around the end once I got the elytra. And before I headed out, I stopped back at the stronghold to use all the levels I had and upgrade my armor. I was also able to make a really good pickaxe. I decided last minute that I wanted to make some changes to the spawning platform because I was just a little nervous about falling off. So I put up a little wall and then I also made a nice accessible staircase. After I completed that, I built up to the portal and pearled through. And here we are in the end highlands. My hopes got really high when I saw an end city right next to the gateway portal. However, after looking at the structure more closely, I realized that none of the rooms would have chests or elytras in them. Unfortunately for me, I would be walking around for about 45 minutes before I found my first end city with an elytra. And finally, there it was, the first end city that I would be able to loot. Me being the Minecraft nerd that I am, I know that there are only three rooms that will have loot in end cities. Those tall, thick rooms will have two chests at the top, the triple layer looking rooms will have an ender chest and one chest, and then the elytra ships will have two chests and of course the elytra. As I was making my way over to the first end city, I noticed another one in the distance, and this is where my luck started to get really crazy. Remember how I said I couldn't find an end city for the first 50 minutes? Well, I think the Minecraft gods were like, you know what, let's give this guy a couple end cities to make up for all that lost time. And it wasn't just one or two extra end cities that I found, I ended up finding six end cities with elytra ships. 
six. I had two shulker boxes and my ender chest completely full of loot. I mean, I was crazy rich. And the loot was insane too. I found a diamond helmet with every single enchant on it except for aqua affinity. Look at this, more diamond armor with perfect enchants. I'll be taking that. Thank you. I had too many tools, so I started combining them to save some space. And look at that, another giant end city for me to loot. At this point, I was getting pretty tired of looting end cities, believe it or not. So I was looking for a gateway portal that could lead me back home. And I found one not too far from this end city. Flying in and boom. Boom, stuck the landing. Back at the village, I sorted through all the loot I had, and this is pretty much what I got. I got six elytras, five spare ones, one that I'm wearing, and a bunch of armor and tools. I forgot to mention, but before I went out looking for an elytra, I managed to trap a zombie villager in the stronghold. After curing him, I made him a librarian, and he started trading me efficiency for books. This is a really helpful villager to have because efficiency can go on pretty much all of my tools, and this will make it a lot easier to get them maxed. The last thing I needed to do was get a villager to trade me an Unbreaking 3 book. Having Unbreaking 3 and Mending on all my tools and armor would pretty much make it indestructible. After cycling a little bit back at the village, I finally got the trade. Not only did it give me the Unbreaking 3 trade, but my homie clutched it with the 5 emerald cost, so I bought out all of his stock. I used a small amount of XP I had to put Unbreaking on the most important things, such as my elytra and a couple pieces of armor. For the rest of the day, I chopped down trees with my efficiency 5 axe. It was so easy to chop down trees now, and it wasn't a hassle at all. I mean, I could take down a whole tree in about 30 seconds. My main goal with trading at this point was for XP because I didn't have an enderman farm yet and I wanted to get XP so I could make a god sword Of course, I had to name my sword Excalibur because I'm Lancelot and I think those two things are related I'm not sure maybe I'm just being an idiot right now With that chapter coming to a close I decided it was time for the next big thing building a house Started off by chopping down some wood for the foundation and for some trades. I don't know if you can tell, but I do get sidetracked a lot because that night I went out looking for some more music discs. Okay, creepers are so low. Creepers are so low. Oh One just died what do I get? Shoot that, shoot that creeper one more time. There we go. I don't know if you can tell, but I was really excited after picking up all these discs. Usually when I'm disc hunting, I get lots of duplicates, but this time I had gotten about seven or eight discs and none of them were duplicates. I was really, really close to completing the whole collection. The next day I went out to a dark oak forest to start chopping down wood for foundations for the house. I found this mountain area that was the perfect size for me to build a massive house on top. The rest of the day I spent chopping down trees on the top of the mountain. I ended up using all that extra wood I got to trade with villagers to get some free emeralds. And later that night I went back to the mountain to finish chopping down the trees. Once I had finished cutting down all the trees, I needed to terraform the land a little bit. My efficiency diamond shovel made that super easy though. It wasn't a hassle at all. For reference, this is the picture I was going to base my build off of. I started off by laying down some foundations. I also torched up the area a little bit to make sure no mobs would get in my way of building. I made sure to take my time with the foundations because this would affect the entire build. And after about two days of chopping wood and placing foundations, this is the final product. Yes, it's not that much. What do you think? I could build an entire house in two days? Come on now. I decided I wanted stone bricks for my flooring, so I went over to a nearby mountain and hollowed it out. I'll be honest with you guys, build Building does get pretty boring. After I placed down all the stone bricks I had, I decided it was finally time to build an enderman farm. Day 50 was approaching fast, which means time was running out for me to achieve my goal of getting full enchanted netherite armor and tools. This enderman farm would play a huge role in whether I would achieve that goal or not. The two most important things I needed for this farm was wool for carpets and a name tag. Everything else I pretty much already had, and I would mine the blocks that I was going to use for the build in the end. I wanted to make sure I had everything I needed before I headed off to the end because going back and forth between the end and the overworld would just be tedious and annoying. So I went out and sheared some sheep. I also managed to pick up a new disc to add to the collection. And what's funny is that I almost ended up dying. I had my elytra on, so I was already missing some armor protection. And this creeper did five hearts of damage. And I kid you not, not even a split second after I put back on my chest plate, another creeper exploded from behind. If I hadn't put my chest plate on there, I think I might have died. The last thing I needed was a name tag. So after trading with this librarian for a bit, I finally unlocked the trade. Not the flex, but guys, look at my music disc collection. I put everything I would need for the farm in a shulker box and then headed to the end. I did take a pit stop in the stronghold library because I would need books to have an enchanting table room underneath the farm. I find it super helpful to have an enchanting table at the actual farm because it saves time from getting levels and then going back to the overworld and then just going back and forth. Again, going back and forth between worlds is just a pain in the ass. Like I said before, I'd be making the farm out of endstone bricks, so once I arrived in the end, I got to mining right away. I also installed some much needed stairs from the spawn platform to the surface of the end. If I remember correctly, I think I needed about 24 stacks of endstone, so once I gathered all of that, it was finally time to descend into the void. Yes, guys.
guys, I know it's hard to believe even a pro Minecraft player like me gets a little nervous when messing with the void. You gotta give me some slack though. I mean, it's the void. I fall in it and my world is lost forever. There's literally nothing I can do and I don't trust my reaction speed to be able to switch to my fireworks fast enough and shoot out of there. I think I'm literally just dead at that point. The first step in building this farm is to build 128 blocks away from the end island and using leaf blocks is good because endermen cannot spawn on them. Next, I made a 9 by 9 platform. This would be the bottom layer of the farm, excluding the enchanting table room underneath. Next, I built a little swimming pool kind of thing. This would be so when I'm flying in with my elytra, I have a safe place to land and I'm not just gonna hit the ground and die. These are all little modifications I make to the farm. The original design is by Shulkercraft and he doesn't have any of these extra things. But what can I say? I love improving the quality of life. I really have nothing else to say at the moment, so just enjoy this building montage. The final step for the farm is to get an endermite into a minecart so the endermen are attracted to it and will fall down into my killing chamber. It only took a few throws of the ender pearl until one finally spawned. I put a name tag on it so it wouldn't despawn and then pushed it into the minecart. Now the farm is 100% operational and I started grinding levels. With all this XP from the farm, I was able to finally max out my chest plate and my main pickaxe. Day 41, I started by removing the leaf bridge that connected the end island to the enderman farm. This way, the only way you could get to the farm was by flying. And after a little bit more grinding, I was able to get some Yeezys with perfect enchantments on them. I was just about to leave the farm when I got a really good enchantment on this bow. I mean, just look at my reaction. I didn't really know what to name the bow, so I asked my Twitch chat and they came up with the name Cupid's Bow, so I settled with that. Excluding my bow, all my tools and armor had max level enchants on it, so the next step was to go to the nether and get netherite. I headed down to Y15 and started mining. Personally, I like to sweet mine for netherite. I don't really like using TNT or beds. I think you only need efficiency 4 on a diamond pickaxe and then you're able to insta mine netherite. And look at that, our first piece of ancient debris, only 3 more to make an ingot. After acquiring enough ancient debris for 4 netherite ingots, I went ahead and turned all my armor into netherite armor. With my new armor, I was feeling very confident, so I decided to pay a visit to a bastion nearby my nether portal. Before I started looting any of the chests, I made sure to kill all the piglin brutes I could see because they scare me. This is Sparta! And imagine my luck, I found pig step. This means I am one step closer to finishing my disc collection. I hopped down into the center of the bastion and checked out the loot. It was pretty good, some diamond armor, although I already had plenty of that. I did, however, enjoy picking up all the gold. Before I left the nether, I went looking for some more netherite for my tools. I got enough ancient debris for two more ingots, which I would be putting on my pickaxes. But I accidentally ended up enchanting the wrong pickaxe. It wasn't that big of a deal though, I had the enemy farm and a bunch of books, so I was able to put all the enchantments back on it. Now that I had a netherite silk touch and a netherite fortune pickaxe, I decided to Call it a day. That night, I picked up the remaining discs for my collection. Pretty sure there are 13 discs total, and with the addition of these last two, I was able to complete the collection. For the rest of that night, I worked on the flooring of the house and added some framework for the second story that would come later. And here's a little clip of me showing off my disc collection. Look at it, every single one found. With only five days left to get full netherite armor and tools, I headed back to the nether. I ended up having some pretty crazy luck and found about eight ancient debris pieces in under 30 seconds. I remember posting this clip on TikTok and it ended up getting around 200,000 views. I'm like trying to think as if I were x-raying where the stuff would be. Oh, hello. Nice. Nice. I'm literally x-raying right now. Oh, I'm literally x-raying right now. Literally. I'm clipping it. Someone clipped this. Literally, someone clipped this. What the? F <laughs> I need to make this into a Twitch uh, for my TikTok. Someone clipped this. What the? F Anyways, now that I had enough ancient debris to make enough netherite for all my tools, I made way back to my portal. But before I left, I remembered I wanted to make a cool shield design, and I needed a wither skull for that. So I made a pit stop at the nearby nether fortress and whacked a bunch of wither skeletons. There's, there's one. Let's go! That was easy. Oh wow, they're actually like... Oh, there's another, bruh. Once I got back home, I made the Wither Skull banner pattern and then made a purple skull banner. Next, all I had to do was combine the banner with the shield and then I wanted to enchant the shield so it's nice and shiny. That looks sexy. Sheesh. 
On day 49, I took all the ancient debris I had and went to the Enderman farm. I should really make another highway because traveling between portals like this is getting pretty annoying. Anyways, I enjoyed my flight over the void. This would be the last day you'd catch me with diamond tools. I had a nice easy landing in the pool and then went down to smelt all the ancient debris I had. Once it was done smelting, I used all the gold I had stolen from the bastions and put it together to make some fresh netherite ingots. And on day 50, I had completed my second goal, getting fully enchanted netherite armor and tools. Back in the overworld, I continued work on the house. This house was going to have a lot of windows, so the first thing I did was mine a bunch of sand that I would smelt into glass. I put up some windows and then got to work on the roof. I was tired of getting wet whenever it rained. The next thing I wanted to work on was the house foundations. This would be a huge factor in making sure the house looked blended into the mountain. Even though it's Minecraft and you can have floating blocks and gravity doesn't really exist, it's always good when you're building to make your structures look like they're actually supported and they're not just floating in the air. After building for a little while, I decided I wanted to clear my head, so I went on a little adventure. I wasn't really looking for anything particular, but I was surprised when I found this. What? Is that- is that- that is a Mushroom Island. Sheesh! Mushroom Islands don't really have anything of value, but I made sure to breed the mushrooms because there was an achievement in the game where you're supposed to breed every single animal, and now I have checked off this box. I was back to work on the house on day 57. As you can see from this aerial view, the very back end of the house is kind of underdeveloped, so that's the first thing I went and fixed. I actually grinded out this part of the house and was done in no time. The only tedious part about this was just going back and forth between chopping wood and then placing it. And once the foundation for the first floor was complete, the next couple days were just spent working on the roof. I even got to work under a really nice sunset on day 59. Days 60 through 62, I just spent working on more of the house and I finished the roof. There was this one pretty difficult area in the back corner of the house that took me a little while to figure out what I was going to do with it. But after some trial and error, I am pretty happy with the final result. The Wither, arguably the most fierce mob in the game, but to me, just another task on my to-do list. To summon the Almighty Wither, you must collect three Wither Skulls, which by the way, only have a 2.5% chance of dropping. On day 63, I made the spontaneous decision that I wanted to beat the Wither. Even though I had more than 30 days to complete this challenge, my Twitch chat urged me to do it now. I decided not to procrastinate and got right to the preparations. The main thing I wanted was a Smite Sword so I could deal extra damage to the Wither, and I also needed to go get one more Wither Skull head. This was not tedious at all though, I picked it up first try. The last thing I needed to do was dig underneath the portal in the end because this is where I would be spawning the wither. The plan was for the wither to get trapped in the bedrock and then I would just crit him out with my sword and I wouldn't take any damage at all. But oh how this went wrong. The Wither escaped. What was meant to be a short 20 second fight had now turned into a long battle, and it was about to get even worse for me. I don't know if I had mentioned before, but my bow did not have infinity on it, which means I was running on limited arrows. And the Wither does not come down into melee range until it is below half health, and it also regens its health, so I was kind of in a pinch. I needed to be super accurate and start hitting my shots so I could get the Wither down to below half health before I ran out of arrows. But if you didn't notice, I had my gaming glasses on. These glasses are scientifically proven to increase accuracy accuracy, precision, and overall skill. So basically what I'm saying is that this weather did not stand a chance. Three arrows left. Two arrows left. One arrow left. And he's down. Let's see how he likes this smite sword. After that intense fight, I wanted to relax a little bit, and there's nothing more relaxing than working on my big ass house. I mean, just look at it. It's actually really coming together quite nicely. I didn't really get into anything serious, I just did a little bit of detailing around the house, but that night I tried completing the sniper duel achievement. All I had to do was kill a skeleton with a bow from over 50 blocks away. I had to put him in the boat because I wanted a fixed target to shoot at, and for some reason when you get to a certain point, the mobs despawn, and that is before you reach the 50 block distance, which is kind of annoying. As you can see, I'm actually shooting blind. I don't actually see the skeleton i'm kind of just shooting in the general area where i put the boat i'm a legend <laughs> let's go
let's go. Day 67, I started construction on the second story of the house. And that night I worked on the foundations. And here's a nice aerial view of the house. It's starting to look absolutely massive. I mean, look how it renders in. Most of day 68 was just spent exploring and looking for drown temples because that's where drowns with tridents are most likely to spawn. And I got really excited when I had three drowns throwing tridents at me. Unfortunately, even with my looting three sword, I was only able to get one trident. This just shows how rare tridents actually are. Please, please, please. You suck. You got no aim. <gasps> Let's go. Day 69 and 70 were just spent in the end. I wanted to fix the Enderman farm. I accidentally built it a little too close to the island, so the spawn rates were kind of messed up. It was a really simple fix. All I had to do was cover a small portion of the island in water so the Enderman wouldn't spawn there. And yeah, look at that. The spawn rates are already much faster. To end off day 70, I finished the roof of the house. I would have to make a staircase up to the second floor, so on day 71, I went to the nether to get some quartz for the staircase. And this is the design I came up with. Not too shabby in my opinion, I mean I'm not the best builder, but I think this would work. Day 72 would probably be my last day at the Enderman farm. Well, excluding going there to mend up my tools and stuff like that. I was able to max out my smite sword and make a netherite, as well as getting a super lucky enchantment on my trident. Yo! Oh, what the? That's that's literally the perfect enchantment. Man, I can't stop making tributes to Ziz, man. Rest in peace. Anyways, the next two days were spent on the second story of the house. Did a lot of building, then tearing down, then rebuilding. It took me a decent amount of time to get to a point where I liked how the second story looked. A thunderstorm blew in on day 76, so I was finally able to go use my trident. I've always wondered why there weren't many villagers in that village, and I think it's because I turned them into witches. Anyways, enjoy this montage of me finishing the exterior part of the house. The house was finished, except it was all empty. And it was too big to just leave the inside all open, so I decided I would have split it up into three or four different rooms. Some of these would be bedrooms, some would be storage rooms, stuff like that. And the next day I started working on one of my favorite builds of the house, the dining room table. I made sure to add a grand chandelier that would hang over the table. And I even added a cake that I would never eat because it's purely for decoration. But seriously, just look at how awesome this looks. BSL shaders will never disappoint. Over here I'm working on the master bedroom. I'm gonna make a nice big bed and add a bathroom and all that fun stuff. But right now I'm working on the walls and making sure to add some depth so they don't just look flat. For the next five days I worked on the nether highway which is a project that I have postponed for a very long time. This highway would connect the portal from my main house to the end portal so I could access the enderman farm in the end easily. And this wasn't a super tedious task or anything like that. I mean the most annoying part was just going back and forth to get ice. Especially because I decided to make the floor out of blue ice which is a total of 81 regular ice or 9 packed ice. But what can I say man? I love to flex and I'm flexing on you guys right now with my blue eyes floor. I also decided to make the walls pretty nice so I got some stone bricks and laid those up and then put some dark oak wood underneath it because I thought it went well with the blue ice color. And this is the final product. I mean, I think it looks pretty good and I definitely can't really tell that I'm in the nether except for the floating particles. It kind of looks like the upside down from Stranger Things. I was back in the overworld for day 91 and I spent my time building up some more rooms. I even made a king size bed for the master bedroom. And day 92, I sectioned off part of the house to make a storage room, which looks really nice. I only had a couple days left before I hit the 100 day marker and I wanted to go out with a bang. So I decided I would go raid a ocean monument nearby. Pretty much all of day 93 was just me getting ready to go, brewing potions like water breeding and night vision and stuff like that. And on day 94, we were on our way. As I was gliding into the temple, I drank my water breathing potion and my night vision potion. And once I entered the temple, I put my trident to use immediately. The little guardian things actually do a pretty good amount of damage, but again, it's also pretty easy to avoid. You just get out of their line of sight. I swam around the temple for a couple minutes looking for the elder guardians and took all 
all three of them out. And once I was done with that, I made sure to pick up the sponges and the sea lanterns because I wanted them for the house. As I was leaving the temple, I saw a pillager outpost and decided to go to it. Believe it or not, I actually haven't done a single raid yet. The main reason for that is because the pillagers who come to your house every so often actually never showed up to my house at all, so I wasn't able to kill them and get Bad Omen and start a raid. Once I'd gotten Bad Omen, I headed straight from the pillager outpost to the village where I'd do a raid. This raid would be really helpful for me because I'd be able to pick up some totems, which are really helpful in a hardcore world. Look at this iron golem though, he's going ham on that ravager. So far, the raid was pretty easy, I hadn't really gotten close to dying at all, and I got some totems that I put in my offhand, so I was chilling. The raid actually did end up going through the night and into day 97. There were also a lot more waves than I thought there would be. I thought I was going to be done like two times, and then there was another wave after that that surprised me. On the final wave though, I did end up getting driven out of the village. I was pretty much running and shooting with my bow, so I was getting further and further away from the village, which unfortunately caused the raid to end, so I didn't get the hero of the village achievement. But it's fine, I got like six totems from it. As you can see here, there are still raiders in the village, but there is no raid bar at the top, so I don't really know what happened. But I got a bunch of totems, like I said, so we were set. And here's a really funny clip, actually. A zombie ended up picking one of the totems I left on the ground, and he used it when I killed him. After finishing up with that raid, I went back home. Days 98 and 99 I spent on the interior of the house. I was putting in the sea lanterns and taking out the torches so everything looked a lot cleaner. And as I waited for the sun to rise on day 100, my mind was already off wandering, thinking about how much I would accomplish in the next 100 days. And there you have it, there's 100 days of hardcore Minecraft. I think I did really good for my first time playing hardcore. If you guys want to see 200 days, which I can easily do, just make sure to like the video and subscribe. And if you have anything to add, make sure to leave a comment below, I'll be sure to check it out. That's all from me, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.